welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Rosie. In today's video, I will be clarifying all of the facts regarding the medication taking Hollywood by storm that is Ozempic. I will be drowning out the noise and delivering the facts on this widely used molecule. As a family physician who's on a mission to help you build your best life possible. I do this by sharing practical and evidence-based advice on mindset, nutrition, and fitness. I do this because I believe that you are your greatest investment, and the more you know, the more empowered you are to make decisions towards your best life possible. Without further ado, let's get into it. I have been seeing articles, videos, memes, all making claims about this magic, wonderful drug by non-experts. Unfortunately, in a world of misinformation and overconsumption, platforms like TikTok and Instagram could share just about anything they want with major consequences to the general population. Why? Because that is where the general population is looking at in order to get their information, not from experts or healthcare providers. So does it really work? At what cost? Who is it good for? Do you gain the weight back when you stop the medication? I will be covering all of this and more in today's video, including my humble opinion on the super complex topic that is chronic obesity. You may have heard the rumor of Kim Kardashian taking Ozempic in order to lose a bunch of weight really quickly. Now, I do not personally follow pop culture at all, so I'm never up to date on the most recent trends, but because this family has an incredible influence on women's body image, I felt it was relevant for me to be on top of this one. Now, I can't find evidence of it being explicitly stated that Kim Kardashian actually took Ozempic to lose her weight really quickly, but rumors point to this as she followed a very strict diet in order to fit into the Marilyn Monroe's Happy Birthday Mr. President dress. Not to mention other stars like Oprah, Mindy Kaling, Adele, and the Twitter master Elon Musk have all been said to be taking this drug, Ozempic, or another drug within the same class, not all admitting to it except for Mr. Elon himself in this tweet right here. So what's all the hype about? Let's give you a little background on this magic drug. Ozempic, or semaglutide, its generic name, was originally created as an anti-diabetic medication. Type 2 diabetes is what it actually treats, but it's being prescribed for weight loss. Here's the thing though, there is another medication called Wagovi which is the exact same molecule, semaglutide, its generic name, which is indicated for weight loss in both Canada and the US. For the purposes of simplicity's sake, for the rest of this video, I'll be referring to the medication as Wagovi, but like I said, the generic drug or molecule is semaglutide, which is both Ozempic and Wagovi. However, all the research is done on Wagovi. So who's a candidate for this medication when it comes to obesity treatment? How much weight will they actually lose? And will they keep it off if they stop it? Finally, what are the risks of people taking this medication? As of right now, January 2023, Wagovi is indicated in both Canada and the US, like I said, for weight loss in very specific population and only for people who are diagnosed with obesity. And let me remind you, chronic obesity is a serious issue affecting about 27% of Canadians, that's nearly one in four, and 42% of Americans, that's nearly half of US citizens, of adult citizens who are affected by chronic obesity. Now, who are the people who qualify for prescription of Wagovi? People with a BMI of over 30 or a BMI over 27 and a comorbidity, like sleep apnea, hypertension, high cholesterol, or type two diabetes. Now, BMI over 27 is not actually obesity, but with this comorbidity, it puts them in a classification where they do warrant the prescription of this medication. The research showed that after about a year's use, patients lost about 13% of their initial weight or up to 13 kilos in someone that was average 100 kilo compared to placebo. This medication is given in addition to prescribing lifestyle changes, namely more exercise, 150 minutes per week, and calorie deficit. However, the medication manages to reduce patients' appetite, cutting cravings at the level of the brain, which lead them to eat less and evidently lose weight as well. Now, what about the evidence with regards to weight loss afterwards? Do they keep it off? If so, for how long? From what we've seen clinically, that is, people who stop the medication tend to gain the weight back. Now, is that everybody? No. Is it the people who don't also follow lifestyle changes? More likely, yes. What does that mean? It means that if people want to see long-term changes, they're going to have to make lifestyle changes in addition to taking this medication or any one of this class. That means increased exercise specific to their body type, nutritional changes specific to their lifestyle, and that's the only way the change is going to be lasting with or without the medication. But since obesity is a chronic condition, it does require chronic treatment, kind of like depression or hypertension. It's not an infection that is treated with one course of antibiotics. It's in fact a chronic 
very complex disease that needs treatment long term. I also want to emphasize that obesity is a very complex condition caused by an interplay of genetic, environmental, behavioral, and metabolic factors. And the environmental part likely is the greatest contributor to chronic increased rises of obesity in Canada and the US. More screen time, increased social isolation, less physical activity. Now what about the side effects? And what about the shortage? The side effects are namely gastrointestinal, that means abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and that's usually dose dependent and very early on in the prescription and a very low risk but significant of pancreatitis and a type of thyroid cancer. I would absolutely say that prescribing this medication needs to be discussed on a case per case basis between a patient and their healthcare provider. There is no right or wrong answer whether it's worth these side effects. But I will say this, if your chronic obesity is causing you a panoply of side effects or undesired risks, like type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease, gallbladder disease, increased risk of many cancers, or affecting your mental health, like causing you depression, may be a good idea for you to be taking this. Not to mention the intense psychosocial burden of being a person with chronic obesity, not necessarily fitting into airplane seats, into typical car seats, and all those other social standards that they don't necessarily fit into. But should anybody be taking this? Absolutely not. Should Oprah, Kim Kardashian, Mindy Kaling, or Elon Musk have been taking this? I cannot say because I don't know what other underlying diseases they may or may not have. Are they diabetic? Do they have hypertension? I don't know. But I do know this. If a patient does not meet the requirements of BMI over 30 or BMI over 27 with a comorbidity, it should absolutely not even be considered for these people. And even if it is prescribed for people with these indications, lifestyle habits needs to be implemented in adjacent to the medication. This medication cannot replace lifestyle changes. If it's given without any lifestyle changes, it will be just as good or bad as a fad diet, meaning acts quickly but does not last forever. Finally, from an ethical standpoint, there has been major back orders on both Ozempic and Wagovi in Canada and the US, and this is causing a super duper big problem for people with type 2 diabetes, who are actually indicated as the first line patients to be getting this prescribed to them, not people who want to lose weight quickly. This is something more the provider needs to be ethically considering when they're prescribing their medication. Our primary mandate is to do no harm. So putting other people who need it at a disadvantage is definitely causing harm. That's all I have to say today about the Ozempic medication. If you have any questions, input, please comment below. Let me know your thoughts. If this video provided any value to you, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and share this with someone who needs to hear this message today. Thanks so much for being here.